you're not good enough at ultrasound, that's not an excuse to punish your patients with radiation. Get out there, ultrasound some hearts, some lungs, some IVCs, let us know how you feel about it. Yeah, we can definitely do that, or we could be better clinicians and use our ultrasound. All right. Hey there, ultrasound nerds. I'm here today with Murad Sanisi, who recently sent me a email with a paper that he published in, uh, was it the Journal of Critical Care? What, what was the journal? Okay. Yeah, and, Journal of Critical Care. Yeah, Journal of Critical Care. And the reason I love this paper, and I felt like we had to get Murad on the podcast, is because it takes this very uh, standard technique that we use for ultrasound guided uh, subclavian line placement. And it's just a little tweak. It's just the tiniest little tweak of the technique Absolutely. that makes it so much more awesome. And that's, that's one reason I love ultrasound is because it allows us to take the standard procedures that we, we normally do in these uh, you know complicated ways and just make them just that little bit safer. So I had to have Murad on the podcast today. I had to hear a little bit more about this technique figure out how he, how he came, this came to be. I, I just, I'm so excited. So first off, Murad, you're from University of Pittsburgh. Is that right? That's correct. Awesome. And how, how long have you been there? Um, actually for a new year now. So I'm actually one of the cardiology fellows and I did my critical care training at the Cleveland Clinic prior to that for two years. Awesome. And so I've been a big fan of your podcast since my embryonic stages of development. So <laughs> That's great, man. That's great. I've never heard a cardiologist tell me that before. So yeah, I, yeah. I, that, that, warm, that warms my heart a little bit. Can I, I'm yeah. going to record that. Oh, wait, I am recording that. That's sweet. Uh, it's recorded. It's, great. It's, it's recorded. <laughs> nice, nice. I'm going to send it to all my cardiology friends. Uh, yeah. So um, that's great. So when did you start using this technique? When did you say, hey, I can make this better? So it, it's pretty amusing. So um, I have always loved point of care ultrasound. It's been a big, big interest of mine. And um, I watch these videos pop up about ultrasound guided subclavian or axillary vein cannulations. And so I thought I'd give it a shot. And one of those days while I was doing it, I remember I inadvertently advanced forward and then I hit resistance. There was a rib. And obviously you have that sphincter, sphincter tightening moment. And yeah, it's a good thing you didn't get like, air back in the syringe. <laughs> absolutely. And I was thinking, oh boy, this could have been a pneumothorax. And then I was thinking, well, why don't I just aim for the rib every single time? And that's exactly what, I, uh, what I've been doing. And the important thing to understand is that this is not a new technique. You know, ultrasound guided subclavians or axillaries have been done before it's been described. But like you said, it's just a little tiny tweak to make it safer. Because in essence, and, and I, I'm sure you know this, whenever you have an enthusiastic resident who wants to do a line two hours before your, an hour before your shift is done, and they've got this nice juicy IJ, you're not going to go for the subclavian. There's always yeah. that trepidation. Right. There's always that fear of pneumothorax. And so this method here I've been using successfully for the past three years now. Um, and in fact, my, you know, the fellows who trained with me, and they've actually incorporated it in the training at Cleveland Clinic for the Critical Care Fellowship. And it basically uses the rib as a shield or a barrier so that even if you do inadvertently advance, it's going to hit that rib. But obviously, you have to line up that vessel well in a longitudinal view. You have to have a good landing strip and you have to have that rib visible and clear. So. So, so walk me through this. Tell me, you know, when I think about ultrasound guided subclavian, I'll, I'll tell you how I've typically done them. Um, I usually put the probe uh, sort of... Uh, uh, sagittally on the patient's chest, get their clavicle into view. I look for the subclavian under the clavicle. I, it starts to run a little bit laterally. And then I usually turn the probe uh, 90 degrees. So I've got more of a, um, an axial plane, right? And then right. I, and then I do a, a long, and a long axis um, insertion of the needle into the, into the subclavian vein. How are you doing it differently? Walk me through it. So you, you, you actually described it perfectly. That's exactly the same way that I do it. The same thing, you put a sagittal approach, you move it towards the deltopectoral groove, right. you're trying to find that area of the axillary vein that's really long and nice. The only difference here is that you are actually making a conscious effort to show that underlying rib and to maximize the view to show that underlying rib. And then when you come in, and again, I always recommend that this be done in the longitudinal view, you are aiming directly at the rib. So, you, you, so that's why it's called the part method or it's just a fancy way of saying plural avoidance with a rib trajectory. As part, long as plural you, avoidance with rib trajectory. So you're you trying go. not to put the needle in the lung. And if yeah. you go past the vein, you want to hit the rib. Okay, got there it. There you go. Okay. Yeah, and so I, I use corny lines like parting ways from a pneumothorax with the part <laughs> method and all that stuff. So Great. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. pretty fancy. So right. that's, you know, the technique in doing your ultrasound guided uh, subclavians are pretty much the same. The only thing that I recommend is to do it longitudinally so you could take advantage of seeing the whole needle shaft and the needle tip 
and then you could make sure that the rib is smack dab in the middle of your field and you know that your port going straight to it. Okay. So that's, that's the minor modification that needs to be done. But a lot of times you need to verbalize, vocalize these changes so people can start to adopt it. So absolutely. It's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, and you know, I guess I've been doing it almost the exact same way for years mm-hmm. now, but, yeah. but for whatever reason, I never had that light bulb go off in my head. Like, well, why don't I just put the rib right behind the vein? And then that way I don't have to worry about the blur anymore. Yeah, I mean, granted, right. you can still go out of plane with the ultrasound beam. That's, you know, you right. still got to have good technique. Maybe yeah. I, I'm not sure this makes subclavian the first central line you should be going for, but it mm-hmm. does uh, hopefully make it a little bit safer. Do you guys have any, any data to support, um, the use of this procedure? Yeah. So after my two years as a fellow, I had, so it was me and a couple of other fellows who combined did about 76 lines. Okay. All of these were subclavian, but, but these were very sick patients. They were on positive pressure ventilation. They had coagulopathy, et cetera. And um, again, we had no pneumothorax, no hemothorax, no serious complications, just a few misplaced catheters and a localized hematoma. That's awesome. Um, yeah, for the most part now, actually, the fellows are actually at the at the Cleveland Clinic. They're actually encouraging them to go for the subclavian first. Okay. Obviously, our sicker patients. So, you know, I always do a vascular survey on my sick patients. I look sure. at their IJs, I look at their subclavians, and then I decide according to the anticipated clinical course: Are they going to need a dialysis catheter? Are they going to need the SWAN, et cetera, et cetera? So, I like to free up the IJs for the SWANs, et cetera. So. Um, more and more people actually fellows have been doing it. It's pretty successful. Again, I don't think this should be for the novice. You know, yeah. you, you have to show proficiency in sure. IJs, both in transverse and longitudinal. Right. Um, but you know, I, I have friends who do the subclavian in the short axis. They're really good. They have great technique, <laughs> you know, but, but for me, I like that safety barrier and I've been yeah. doing it for years now and it actually is my go-to line. So the That's first awesome. line I do, the first line I do is this subclavian, and um, it's strange because this this has been there for a while, but but people haven't caught on. I I, I you know there's this self perpetuating cycle where less people are doing it, and in doing so, they don't know how to do it, and the people they teach don't know how to do it, and now we've kind of almost lost that 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 skill set. You know, it's interesting. I think the subclavian line is getting is really i think you're right it's getting almost forgotten Mm -hmm. um because of ultrasound i think people have moved to you have to use ultrasound every time you put in a line which i think is a good idea like i i I don't argue with that what whatsoever but i think because of that and because people are more comfortable with the ij it seems easier um to perform an ij ultrasound guided central line i think everybody's doing the ij's and talking to our em residents i mean you know we've got residents that have hardly put in any lines in the subclavian i mean they're, they're mostly doing IJs. Um, and then, you know, most of them never put in a blind subclavian, let alone an ultrasound guided subclavian. Right. Um, you know, so this is, this is great because I think people have developed this trepidation to performing an ultrasound guided subclavian because it is right. more technically difficult because people like you and me are saying, you know, you need probably more proficiency with the IJ before you start with the subclavian. Absolutely. So at least this is a little, like a little something we can throw at them to say like, Hey, here's a little safety net you've got that you go. may, may benefit you and may decrease the likelihood that you're going to put the needle into the plural, which is what we're all worried about. Right. We're worried about putting it into the plural or maybe hitting big red, um, and not being able to <laughs> compress on it. And, you know, one thing you mentioned uh, in your paper is that, you know, not only uh, do you have the rib behind the vein so that you're less likely to hit the pleura, but you're in an area where you can actually compress the artery or vein because you're more laterally placed, right? And you're also on top of the rib. So ideally, if you hit something that's pulsating and bleeding out, you can compress the vessel on top of the rib, which is awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. And another added advantage that's helped me a lot is that I use a micropuncture technique and a lot of times these patients have collapsible vessels, very, very frustrating. And I actually use the rib to pin it down. And sometimes I'll go through and through with the micropuncture, mm-hmm. hit the rib. I can feel that crunchy pull feel back. of the rib and then just pull back and then just thread that catheter in. And it's helped me a lot. Um, but again, I, you know, you have to develop that experience, that mental armor, the, you know, not to be afraid of doing these things. And so usually what I tell other fellows is get good at IJs, get good at IJs and longitudinal you know, have that ability to line up everything in the needle. And once you're good at that, then you've graduated to come and do the subclavians after that. 
That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. And and I, I just want to remind everyone, never feel like you're so good at central lines that you don't need to try new techniques or practice new yeah. things. It wasn't yeah. too long ago, in fact, that I hit my first artery doing a central <laughs> line, in fact. And uh, <laughs> all of us can do it, man. We can all mess up. Yeah. You're gonna yeah. bag you're gonna bag a lung at some point. I remember when I was in residency, this like there was this, you know, epic critical care doc that, you know, everybody trusted and and he took out a lung put it in a subclavian. Yeah. I mean, everybody yeah. does it no matter how much practice you have at some point you're going to have a complication. So be willing to try new things, learn new techniques. Um, and I think this one is a good one that everyone should take a look at. So, uh, I've got the article up here on the podcast. Everybody should go take a peek at it. Um, we've got some, uh, some images that we're going to show and, uh, and yeah, thanks a lot for, uh, thanks a lot for coming on the podcast and telling uh, us about thank, your technique, Marad. Thank you for having me. It's, it's been a pleasure. Awesome. Vascular access is one of my all-time favorite topics to talk about when we're talking about indications for ultrasound. But you know what I like more than vascular access? That's patient safety. So anytime that you have a procedure where you can increase success rate and decrease the complication rate, I'm down. This actually reminds me of a very similar technique when you're doing ultrasound-guided supraclavicular brachial plexus blocks. You basically orient the probe and think about your trajectory of the needle so that if you happen to go a little bit too far when you're looking for that brachial plexus, you're going to hit bone instead of hitting what you shouldn't be hitting, which is the pleura. Now, when I'm doing ultrasound-guided subclavians, I'm typically doing them in the short axis because I tend to like the short axis a little bit better. But you know what? This looks too good to not use. So next time I do it, I'm definitely going to try this using the part method. Thanks, Murad, for coming onto the podcast. And I'm really hoping that we see more things like this from you in the future. If you're not good enough at ultrasound, that's not an excuse to punish your patients with radiation. Get out there, ultrasound some hearts, some lungs, some IVCs, let us know how you feel about it. Yeah, we can definitely do that, or we could be better clinicians and use our ultrasound. <laughs>